The basic message format, the 16-line government radiogram, we introduced it in episode 75, and in episode 76, we talked about origination. We're going to follow up today by looking at some examples that have been tried. We're going to focus on some of the mistakes so that we can correct ourselves so that we'll be better prepared in the future to use this format effectively. Stick around. Black one, black one. So let's see where we left off. We're going to do a quick recap of the structure. The presentation that we made was not complete. It was abbreviated a bit so that it would fit on the slide. The full format structure is described in ACP 125 and ACP 126. See below for links. Anyway, we turn to the structure. Of course, the first thing that jumps out at me is an oversight in my schematic. I show line four, but I don't identify it. Let's get that fixed. Here, line three and four are shown on the same row despite being different lines. They are written next to each other on a single row. All right, so that's fixed. For details or to answer questions, you'll want to consult the authoritative references. We've got them up on the Black Swan Comics website, links below. Several standards are there. You'll find that the message format, including a schematic, is in ACP 125. That will show you how to relay the message by voice as well. ACP 126 will show you how they are printed in the schematic of the message presented in that standard. So now we are going to show the entire heading part, including line two, which is the call sign or call signs of the receivers. In voice procedure, these are the call signs that come before this is. Line one was used in tape relay and is not used in voice or print procedure. In this example, W8OMR is the receiving station and KD8TTE is the transmitting station for message number one. The from address, the originator, line six, is the sign, which could be a call sign, uh, could be a tactical call sign, a position like an ICS position, or some other indicator, even a name. This is the originator of the message. It's mandatory. Line seven is the action addressee. Again, it's a sign, a call sign, a tactical call sign, a position, a name. Whoever is meant to act on the message, if any action is required, goes here. Line eight is the info addressee. It's not someone who is supposed to act on it. It's for their information or their awareness. It is still, however, an addressee. So it's going to be a call sign, a position, or something similar. Line nine confuses a lot of people. It is an exempt addressee. If you have to send a message to a group, you can keep repeating line seven or eight as needed. Two, two, two. Info, info, but sometimes you're sending it to almost everyone and exempting only a small group. In that case, it's easier to send to or info to the group and then to exempt a part of the group that should not get the message. To illustrate this point, let's use an example. Suppose in an incident command system ICS structure, we have the incident commander wanting to send a message to a bunch of people in the command structure. Everyone in the logistics section for action, but it's not applicable to the communications unit, so they shouldn't get it. A copy for information needs to go to the planning section, everybody over there. It could be that the way to address the message would be to medical unit, to food unit, to supply unit, to facilities unit, to ground support unit, info, planning section. Or instead, it could be to logistics section, info, planning section, exempt communications unit. In that case, if we do not count the groups in the message, then our heading, everything up to the first separator, is going to look like this. We can see lines 2 through 10 spelled out on the right with a description of what exactly they are. So let's take a look at this example from Alpha Alpha 1 Alpha Alpha Alpha. This is a message that is coming in and it's in the 16 line format. Very nice. We see a good use of folding in the to addressee. The action addressee is clear. There's only one, but there's some multi-row information there. 
and we've got a group count of eight that looks good and then we run into good day i'm not sure what that is good is not a pro word and it's not anywhere in the heading of the basic message format let's take a look at another example and this one's up from alpha alpha 2 bravo 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 in this case, we've got a good looking message it's coming to KD8TTE for action. And we have an info address E, uh, your message number. Okay, that may be a bit of a problem. That is not a sign that we recognize as a station. And let's take a look at a third example. Alpha Alpha 3, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. In this case, uh, we've got a 16 line radiogram, looks good. We can see uh, it's got an originator, an action addressee, two uh, info addressees. We got a group count of 73. Ooh, and then we see MSG. This is not a pro sign that we recognize. It's not part of the heading for the 16 line. So let's take a look at this and uh, see what we've got going on. Well, the first, let's take a look at our group count, 73. Uh, we take a look at the text part of our message, and we see 45 groups, so they don't agree. Remember that our group count is only the text, that is, what is between the two separators. We count those up and get 45 groups, and so we're going to need to make those agree at 45. Thus, our group count becomes 4-5, and we change that in the heading. And the next thing that we turn our attention to is the ProSign MSG, which we don't recognize. And this appears to be actually part of the message, is trying to give us some information about where it's coming from. In this case, this is part of the text, so it might not be exactly what is coming in. Somebody's trying to quote what follows. Nevertheless, it is part of the message that is coming from Alpha Alpha 3 Charlie Charlie Charlie. So that needs to go into the text section of the message. Interestingly, we also note that it uses NTS style punctuation, that is to say, using an initial X for a break in thought. In fact, with the 16 line, we don't have the same restrictions. We are able to use a period and it is spoken as full stop. So we can tighten that up and now we see the message with the introduction as part of the text. We have used the period to indicate the end of sentences, which we will voice as full stop. And we count up our groups. We now have 53 groups. So we're going to make that agree. And what we are left with is a message that will be quite a challenge to move by voice. That might be kind of an interesting training task for you if you'd like to give that challenge a go. All right, so we've taken a look at the 16 line. We've focused on the heading, and we have gone through three examples of messages that have come in. These are real examples that we tried. The important thing with all of these is to try them. We can look at a video, we can read a book, and say, okay, we understand how it works, but until we actually try it, we're not going to find ourselves actually making the mistakes that we will make during the course of an operation best to get the mistakes out of the way early on. That's a point of our training is to have that follow through, actually give it a try, have somebody take a look at it and help us to avoid repeating mistakes when it comes time for an operation. So we've walked through corrections for one of the three messages and the challenge to you now is to go back to our incoming messages and see how you would make the corrections to make those fit. So go back to message number four and see how you would make that correction. If you like, go ahead and send a message to me. You can send it to me via WinLink if you are not able to get to the Black Swan Net, or if you're able to reach the Black Swan Net, you are, of course, welcome to report in and to transmit your corrected message to me. And then the same thing for message 8005. I've blanked out some bits because it had some information identifying real people and so on. So you might want to do something similar, fill in the blanks with something that you like, but again, take a look at that message. How would you make the corrections given how you saw I made corrections in our third incoming message?
That's it for part three in the series on the 16-line basic message format radiogram. I hope that you've enjoyed that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our content. Like the video so others can see what's going on here and share it with others to help them come up to speed as well. Until next time, this is Radio KD8 TTE.